And some awesome Halo Infinite news here, guys. Co-op campaign flighting looks to be taking place in July. This was recently just announced on Halo's Twitter, guys. Make sure you sign up for the Halo Insider program, guys, if you want to jump in and play this. As Halo Infinite's campaign, it's just like it's built for co-op, man. It would be so great. So I'm definitely going to be showcasing a lot of gameplay, showing you guys examples, stuff like that. I'll also keep you guys up to date when this does come to us, guys, to be able to play. But it looks like next month, we're going to be able to play some network co-op campaign in Halo Infinite. That's going to be amazing. So Microsoft has added a second Bethesda showcase two days after the main event happening this Sunday on the 12th. Me as a big Halo fan and Xbox fan as well, I'm definitely looking forward to this as the big acquisitions of Bethesda have been now for a year. The big acquisition of Activision Blizzard is now in effect as well. Rumors are that we're going to get some Diablo 4 news on top of that, which is really freaking cool. But I'm sure a lot of you guys are Halo fans and wondering what's so great about this second day. Does that mean we're going to get some more Halo stuff or something like that? Well, possibly they did this last year as well if you guys remember that they had a second showcase kind of going more detailed look into a lot of the things that get announced within the first date so that's kind of what I'm expecting this second date to be it's not like they had like so much content that they need to have a second date i think this is more just an additional show that we had like last year where they kind of sit down maybe we have a good discussion with some developers maybe just kind of talk about what we saw and really not provide that much more detail but this extended show is taking place on june 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 1 p.m. Eastern in the U.S. here. But looking more into this date, I think it might be a big Halo date. If you guys remember this live stream with Jerry Hook and Unishack talking about season two and the stuff that's coming with that update, there was that weird kind of glitchy moment during the broadcast where like they showcase like Eratus and some weird kind of glitchiness happening right there. Well, there's some interesting numbers involved with that scene. And the image in question is this one right here, where you see four numbers in the corners right here. And the beat, this one was 0427. This was the date of that live stream. And then on the right side is 0614, which is, well, translated to a date. That's June 14th. And if we continue on following these breadcrumbs, it looks like it might be the announcement of like a Halo Battle Royale. If you guys remember, we covered this leak previously on the channel here that it's been in development for over two years. It's supposed to be kind of considered like a separate part, kind of like how Warzone is to Call of Duty and things like that. Uh, Jess Corden said they did believe that they'd be targeting season three or four when it comes to this release. Though that time prediction was made before the announcement of season two being six months long. So it's supposed to be kind of like at the end of this year is what he was kind of saying with that time frame. Which by looking at the roadmap, season three should launch on November 8th, which would be the end of this year. So it does kind of line up right there. I absolutely will be covering everything big that happens within that Xbox Bethesda showcase happening this Sunday. I will be live streaming the event as well, guys. So come check out my Twitch channel. Link in the description down below and in the pinned comment. You guys can come by and hang out. And let's all get hyped together about all the awesome stuff that's happening in gaming later this year. Really crossing my fingers for some good Halo news, though. Today is Tuesday, so you know what that means? Shop update! So let's take a quick look right here. So we have a 1600 credit armor set right here, which has been the most expensive set we've had since launch which used to be 2000 credits now, but this one does have a little bit extra content tied to it uh this is like the, the earl armor set if you want to call it that uh it has like a helmet a helmet attachment piece a really cool chest piece which actually that does look kind of sick i like the glow sticks on it a lot uh this also this uh side pack right here it's kind of like a tax scanner that actually looks kind of sweet not gonna lie a different kind of shoulder piece right there which i believe we've seen in some forms of the advertisement i've definitely seen that around for sure different kind of knee pads the different types of hand glove covers on that which look kind of basic in my opinion and to fill everything out you get some emblems on top of that which is kind of like whatever kind of stuff but yeah that's not really like 1600 credits that seems a bit expensive though again it's not shown within the ui which is like i don't understand why that happens but you also do get the rusty armadillo coating right here as you see right here so you can have that color on your rakshasa armor set right there next bundle we have is the strong iris which is essentially purple gold and black on your weapons right here which me personally this is my rival school right here, UW colors here up in Washington. I went to Washington State. 
And uh, my team was the rivals of the UW Huskies, which their colors were purple and gold. Our colors were crimson and gray. So I personally take offense to these colors for the most part. Um, but if yeah, if you are if you're a trader and like hanging out with all the cool kids that like purple and gold, more power to you on that one. But you know you can see the different kind of options we have right here with the assault rifle, shotgun. We have the sidekick right there as well. Get some emblems thrown in there on top of that, which is kind of like whatever their emblems. Uh, next we have the timeless gravel, which I saw this one earlier. I'm like, oh damn. I really like this. It has a bit of a shiny effect to it, which is really cool looking. Uh, but why, I don't know why this one is 400 credits, where I believe the coating that we had last week in that bundle was 300 credits. I mean, they're kind of slowly cooking the frog in the pot kind of thing, <laughs> or raising up the prices. But I don't know why this one's worth 400 credits. That doesn't make sense. And you get a bunch of emblems on top of that as well, though. And also you get the weapon charm of Forky. Yes, the forklift weapon charm right here. That's kind of sweet if you like your Halo Reach memes. Now some other gaming news. It looks like Modern Warfare 2 is getting a map editor. This is a leak from Ralph's Valve, who is a credible Call of Duty information leaker. Then he provides some details about what this map editor actually entails for Call of Duty. More detail here is saying that Infinity Ward and Trek have plans with producing a community-led effort incorporating an offline mode equipping players with the necessary tools for blocking out, mapping, and editing existing maps. Basically, it's not like Forge where you're creating maps, but you're able to edit the existing maps in a way to where it maybe be more beneficial to the gameplay. You can also customize spawn points, objectives, and restrictions. Continuing on, saying that completely changing the scenery of a level and its individual properties such as crates and containers. So this is more of a map editor rather than a map creator like we have with Forge. So I've been seeing a lot of people going like, oh my god, Call of Duty is getting Forged before Halo. Not exactly again this is a bit of leaked information so you can't take it as 100 truth but ralph's valve is a rather credible leaker so very interesting he brought up these points also saying that the altered maps will be closely regulated if a creator is approved they will receive a verified check mark so essentially it's kind of in a cool way of being like hey we recognize all the good map editor players out there and uh well you get a verified check mark which i think would be really awesome if they have that with halo infinite I doubt it, but you know, people do tend to make a name for themselves when it comes to map creations within the community. Also, just a friendly reminder, guys, that the worldwide reveal of Modern Warfare 2 is happening tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be covering it on the channel because I am very hyped about this game. And judging by your guys' response on the channel here, you guys are pretty excited about this game as well. Now, usually these reveals involve like cinematics, probably to kind of tease people up, but it looks like we're gonna get some actual gameplay the day after on the 9th rare with the uh, Summer Game Fest looking like on Thursday saying that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 will be have a world premiere there as well at Summer Game Fest, which is kind of like a pseudo E3 in a way, if you guys don't know what we're talking about there. Saying that your first look at campaign in action with a level playthrough. So like actual gameplay of the campaign is taking place within Summer Game Fest, which I'm very excited about that. I certainly will be covering it on the channel as well. I don't really expect to see anything Halo related to Summer Game Fest, I'm sure they'll probably save all those announcements for Xbox Bethesda Showcase. But if the game looks good for Modern Warfare 2, I'll be excited about it. In some other news, it looks like Diablo Immortal, the recently released mobile game that's also on PC, but mainly made for mobile by Diablo, is, uh, well, kind of a shame. It's pay to win, it looks like. Which is kind of like big surprise. A mobile game is free to play, and it's also pay to win. What this article states here is that there's a bit of an XP wall that happens once you reach your mid-30s to get up to the end game of level 60, which is your max cap. Uh, but basically, when you first start playing the game, initial leveling up system is pretty good, actually. But once you get towards the end game, that's when things get really rough. Basically, what you're doing at end game is trying to get these high level gems. But the only way to get these gems is basically by paying for them because they showcase the drop rate of these high level gems, which helps upgrade your character, right? Saying that a five star gem, it has a 0.05% chance of a drop rate, which I think they, they legally showcase these drop rates, which is effectively not really possible so really if you want to rank up your character the best way to do it is to actually pay and if you end up paying it could cost you anywhere from forty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars to max out your character freaking yikes dude now this is a mobile game so i'm sure that's kind of standard for the experience right there i know a lot of people who are not traditionally 
say mobile gamers were really excited about Diablo Immortal, myself included. But after seeing all this stuff and how once you hit the level 30s, it just kind of becomes a complete XP wall to kind of rank up your character and these horrible headlines of how much it actually would cost to just kind of get your way up to the top. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And Diablo Immortal is getting absolutely bombed when it comes to its ratings. Uh, I think just a couple days ago, the Metacritic score was up in the 80s, but the user scores with over 1800 ratings is at 0. 0.6. That is awful. A lot of the reviews citing the pay to win aspects and basically like it was doomed to fail anyways in the view of the players because it's a Diablo game traditionally on PC. People were thirsty for Diablo 4. This is the last Diablo game we got was back in 2013. And for the next Diablo experience to be on mobile platform, it just rubs players the wrong way. If you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out this news and informational playlist right here for you guys. Thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.